Now you may have noticed quite a few new smartphones have launched these past few months and your uncle Spurt tries to cover as many of them as possible but he's just one man, an incompetent alcoholic man at that. So occasionally a few of them slip through my slightly greasy fingers. And one such phone is the mighty Vivo X100 Pro. A 6.78 inch behemoth powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 9300. Got one of the biggest batteries of any flagship phone out there and a glorious triple N Zeiss camera setup. It was launched at the arse end of last year and frankly I'm not quite sure how it managed to slip me by but I've had my sim slapped in there for the past week or so using it as my full time smartphone. So is this the best phone I never reviewed? Well here's my full Vivo X100 Pro verdict and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, this certainly feels relatively slimline for a flagship phone helped along by the curved edges. This is one of very few curvy flagships that I've reviewed recently now that Samsung etc are trending back towards completely flat displays. But in terms of sheer girthiness, the Vivo X100 Pro is like most flagship phones out there with a serious bit of camera chunk. The upshot is that you've got a good bit of finger shelf action here which is certainly appreciated when you're using this phone one handed. Helps you to actually keep hold of the phone while reaching up to the top end of that gargantuan 6.8 inch display. Especially as this phone is a proper heifer at 225 grams. And around the back end of the Vivo X100 Pro you've got some frosted glass surfacing which sadly doesn't add much grippiness. But it does mean you're never really troubled by greasy fingerprints or smudges or anything like that apart from on the actual camera bump bit which does require the occasional bit of polishing. You know, that bit gets muckier than your mum after five Bacardi breezes. And also I do really like the soft touch finish that that frosted back brings. Feels all velvety on the skin. Mm. I gotta say though sadly as far as looks go the Vivo X100 Pro just isn't really doing it for me. It feels about as sexy as Nigel Farage taking a shower in cold custard. You know, you got wee bits of flair like that stainless steel camera housing is rather nice. And it's probably just me. I'm probably just jaded after seeing so many smartphones with a massive f off circular camera and just a very similar design. But it doesn't help that this black model looks rather straight laced. Although according to Vivo's official press blurb, this asteroid black model transports you to a world of infinite wonder and serenity. Which would be particularly handy if you happen to live in Middlesbrough, say. I mean, you want transport in anywhere, really. It's not making me feel serene though, just a wee bit bored. Sorry Vivo. And even though I haven't exactly treated the Vivo X100 Pro with care this past week, it's still in perfect nick. No scratches, dents or scuffs to speak of on the back end or the frame and up front you've got a pre-installed screen protector on top of that display. Well the whole thing is also IP68 water and dust resistant as you'd expect from a premium flagship device. Now for your software here, well of course it is a bit of Android 14 action but pressed firmly on top of that is the FunTouch OS 14. The launcher with possibly the most FNAR worthy name and yet it's actually pretty straightforward and dare I say it a little bit boring again. I actually like it in many ways because it doesn't piss about with standard stock Android. You've still got your Google Discover feed, you've got your apps tree, you can drag down that notifications bar where you'll find all of your necessary toggles all completely customizable of course. And speaking of customization, there's plenty of that. You've got all of the usual wallpaper shenanigans, but have always on display action with plenty of different styles to choose from. And if you dive on into dynamic effects, you can change up all kinds of different animations, including the fingerprint icon animation, the face recognition animation, the slightly eerie way the phone glows whenever you get an incoming call or a notification. But possibly my favourite part of FunTouch OS is the fact that you get basically no crapware stuffed on this thing. No Facebook, no LinkedIn, no booking.sodding.com. And that's certainly something the likes of Xiaomi could learn from. That's for damn sure. You don't have to spend ages deleting loads of crap that you don't want on here. Not that you'd really even have to bother because you've got 512 gigs of storage. And sadly not expandable via micro SD, but you can't have everything. And that's basically standard for any flagship phone these days apart from Sony's Xperia blowers. And you've got the usual security shenanigans on here including an optical in-display fingerprint sensor which I've had no jip from whatsoever even if my hands are a bit clammy or whatever seems to still work. And you've got a tasty wee bit of face unlock to back that up as well. 
And because I've been a wee bit slack, shall we say, with my Vivo X100 Pro review, it has been patched to buggery these past few months. And I've got to say, I've seen pretty much no bugs or quirks or untowards behaviour whatsoever. The only real complaint I have, as usual, is with FunTouch's smart app control, which ticks over in the background. And this isn't so much smart as it is just massively aggressive. It doesn't really control those apps, it more just murders the living sh** out of them. So if you've got the likes of WhatsApp or Gmail running in the background, they'll usually get quietly bumped off and therefore you won't receive any notifications. You have to go to the settings menu, go into that smart app control and make sure those apps are disabled in it. And yeah, maybe if I kept on using this phone for a month or longer than the smart app control would learn, hey, this guy really doesn't like it when we keep killing all of his messaging apps. There are so many new smartphones, I'll suddenly never have the luxury of finding out, but certainly for the first couple of weeks, it is no good. And as far as OS updates and security updates go, where well, you've got three years of guaranteed support, apparently from the Vivo X100 Pro, which is not bad. It's not great. Some rivals like Samsung and Google do, of course, offer considerably longer over double the support, but hey ho. Oh, and while the Vivo X100 Pro does boast some AI functionality, most of it tucked away into the camera tech, you don't get the same slew of features that the likes of Samsung offers with its circle to search, etc. There's no way to transcribe or summarize recordings or you know do the translation shenanigans in messaging apps, but that's something that Vivo might bring to the X100 Pro in a future update. And I do really like that 6.78 inch AMOLED display as well with its 2800 by 1260 pixel resolution, keeping visuals crisp, despite the fact this is a pretty ruddy massive panel. You got full HDR10 streaming support, although no Dolby Vision on here, same as those Samsung Galaxy S24 flagships and quite a lot of other rivals. You can tweak the colors if you want to make them even more vibrant and vivid. And this screen is eye explodingly bright as well, although it doesn't go quite as dim as I would like. And I've got to say the auto brightness has been occasionally a wee bit bulky. Like a couple of times it's been the dead of night pitch black and that screen brightness has been nearly maxed out. But it's LTPO tech, so it scales all the way down to one hertz refresh when you're just viewing a static image or something. And it can bump all the way up to 120 hertz for your gaming shenanigans. And thankfully, even though that display is curved on both edges, I've had absolutely no issues really with screen responsiveness. Even when I'm gripping the phone really tight, as you can see, my palm flab and fingers intruding on that screen doesn't seem to muck everything up. Still functions exactly as you would expect. The only time I've possibly had an issue with screen responsiveness here on the Vivo X100 Pro is when using the camera tech trying to tap one of these tiny on-screen toggles. Could be an issue with the sensitivity, could just be me being a cack-handed twat. Feel free to state your own opinion on that one in the comments. Now, as for the stereo speaker setup on the X100 Pro, well, it's perfectly fine. I'll just give a quick demonstration. And frankly, the 2200 chip was already about as powerful as a gerbil's fart when it was brand new, let alone two bloody years old. Now, from a phone this size, I would expect very beefy output, but as you can hear there, those speakers are surprisingly quiet when you max them out, though at least the sound quality stays pretty good. The audio stays clear, it's certainly not tinny, but if you do find yourself in a noisy environment, you'll absolutely want to slap on a pair of headphones instead. Certainly no headphone jack here, again, pretty standard for a flagship smartphone in 2024, but the Bluetooth streaming has been absolutely flawless. Now, one of the most exciting and intriguing aspects of the Vivo X100 Pro is the fact that it's powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 9300 rather than Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. This is Snapdragon's big rival for 2024, and it's helped out here by a hearty helping of 16 gigs of RAM. And while that Snapdragon has just the one ultra core, the Dimensity 9300 has four of those bad boys stuffed inside it like a proper massive show off. Plus it comes packing that Arm Immortalist G720 GPU, a 12 core beast which increases peak gaming performance and ray tracing abilities by 46% over the old Dimensity. In other words, the gaming abilities will absolutely blow your tits off. You've got a gaming mode slapped on here, courtesy of FunTouch, which can boost the performance if needed. You can enable the game super resolution mode, which artificially upscales those graphics, in addition to a game display enhancement tool, which makes the visuals a wee bit brighter and bolder. You've even got a frame rate boost feature that uses interpolation smarts to insert extra frames for extra smoothness. Although I honestly didn't notice any difference with this active in Genshin Impact, but to be fair, that frame rate was already pretty smooth. 
There was no noticeable dip even when I was gaming for a solid couple of hours. And that is despite the fact that the Vivo X100 Pro gets rather toasty with all of those features switched on and the graphics quality set to maximum levels. My palms were certainly a bit sweaty when I finally put the phone down, but that performance was just absolutely fantastic. As for the battery tech, well, most massive smartphones like this tend to max out at around sort of 5,000 milliamp hour capacity, but Vivo's like, stuff that, we're going one further, baby, 5,400 milliamp hours. So even when I absolutely tried to kill this thing in a single day, you know, seven or eight hours of full on screen on time, lots of media streaming, lots of camera play, Skype and all that good stuff, I still didn't even manage to get this thing into bloody power saver mode. So certainly if you are a heavy smartphone user, you will absolutely adore this thing. And if somehow you are in danger of draining this thing, well, no worries because the X100 Pro supports super nippy 100 watt fast charging. It's actually slightly slower than the regular Vivo X100, which supports 120 watt wired charging, but it's still more than nippy enough. In 15 minutes at the plug, you'll have more than enough juice to get you through a good few hours of playtime. You've also got support for 50 watt wireless charging, although as with a lot of smartphones these days, that chunky camera I found really gave me some jip when I was trying to get it to charge on my wireless charging pad because it just lifted the whole phone off the thing, so I had to find an exact sweet spot where the two sort of made contact and it was all fine. And last up, the camera tech, which here on the Vivo X100 Pro is another Zeiss collaboration consistent of a triple 50 meg setup. And that primary shooter is the 50 meg IMX989 sensor. It's a one inch Sony sensor bolstered by Vivo's very own stabilization tech. Now this is the same sensor that Vivo used for the older X90 Pro, and I'm absolutely chuffed to see it back in action here in the X100. As before, you'll get crispy pics no matter the lighting conditions, so even in snaps aren't grainy even when you're stuck in auto mode, while this blower also churns out natural looking tones rather than sprucing everything up. In addition, you've got that nifty Zeiss T-Star lens coating, so you'll see a lot less light related shindiggery such as flaring and haloing when you're shooting in brighter conditions. And the HDR chops are of course excellent with next to no whitewashing when your subject's framed by a bright blue sky or some other harsh backlighting. The Vivo X100 Pro also spats out fantastic looking portrait snaps with a range of focal lengths. And even indoors you should get sharp looking pics with a selection of bokeh style blurring tools and accurate edge detection. Now Vivo has chucked in its very own V3 image processing chip so you can snap portrait shots as quickly as you like and just instantly see the results. It's quite incredible just how fast this thing is. And while that primary sensor is Sony, the other two are Samsung and Omnivision efforts. So first up there's an upgraded 50 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. And this captures plenty of fine detail, even in lower light, but the change in manufacturer does mean you'll get completely different tonal results. But still, it's more than respectable, can produce some good looking snaps. And last up, you've got a 50 meg floating telephoto lens, and this 100mm shooter kicks in at the 4.3x zoom level. And while those tones are once again less realistic than what you'll see with the main IMX989 sensor, the telephoto lens performs well across a range of conditions and is certainly a rival to the S24 Ultra and other flagship zoom efforts. Once you zoom in past the 30x zoom level, it swiftly becomes apparent that the X100 Pro is using some form of sharpening shenanigans to try and keep things from getting grainy, with sometimes mixed results. But it is rare that you'd really have to punch in much more than that anyway. And that V3 chip also boosts the video smarts here on the X100 Pro, allowing you to shoot up to 4K resolution video with a bokeh style background blurring again. And this can be a wee bit shonky of course, but it's there if you want to play around with it. Otherwise you can shoot up to 8K resolution video at 30 frames per second, or 4K video at 30 or 60 FPS. And as usual I stuck with 4K resolution for my testing, and this produces some sharp looking footage with again reasonably natural looking colours. Flipping between the different lenses while shooting is a relatively smooth experience, you've got that versatility, while the stability is also good enough to keep your video from looking all wobbly. The audio does get rather muffled when conditions are windy, but otherwise no real complaints. Those mics do a decent job of picking up sound even a fair distance from the phone. And finally, the Vivo X100 Pro also has a 32 megapixel selfie shooter, and it's absolutely fine doesn't seem particularly perturbed by bright or cack lighting, it does a reasonable job with skin tones, or a complete lack of skin tone in my case. 
Uh, you can once again shoot up to 4K resolution footage at 30 or 60 frames per second with that selfie snapper. I've had no complaints whatsoever when I've been using the Vivo X100 Pro for Skyping or Zooming. Again, those mics do a respectable enough job. So there you have it, my lovelies. That finally, at long last, is my belated Vivo X100 Pro review. And I find that the one thing that it's really lacking is that flaw factor. This is basically excellent in every area. The performance is fantastic. The battery life will just keep you going all day long. No worries whatsoever. The camera tech, pretty much bugger all to complain about there but it just doesn't exactly get your pulse racing is the only thing it's the volkswagen golf equivalent of a smartphone you'll bugger all to complain about but you'll never get a stiffy driving it but anyway yes would heartily recommend the vivo x100 pro if you just want a solid all-round flagship smartphone especially if you have to see any good deals on it unfortunately like all vivo phones it is a bit of a pain in the ass to actually find here in the uk anyway that's what i reckon be great to your thoughts on the vivo x100 pro down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest greatest in tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.